Hey guys and welcome back to another Unmentioned 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create it so the rain will stop when you go inside or you go undercover or anything like that. So in previous videos I've set up actually creating the rain itself. So you can go and watch those videos on that video if you haven't already because I'm going to be advancing upon that. And today I'm just going to be making it so that rain will now stop when we go inside or undercover. So let me hit play and show you what it's going to look like. So you can see we're outside here and it's raining. And if I go under this cover here, it's going to stop raining like so. And as soon as I leave, it will start raining again. And it will do the same here as well. And we can do this absolutely anywhere we like. So I'm not going to be using box collisions or anything like that. Because this way it's just a lot easier and a lot more dynamic for us to be using, for doing. So this is how we're going to be setting up today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me it's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, or for you it's going to be third, first, what if you've named it. And we're doing this because we want to see if the player character is undercover or is inside, or essentially is under a roof. So once you've opened it up, we're going to go to the movement input code which we have here, which you should have by default. And what we're going to do is we're going to come out of one of the add movement inputs, and we're going to get a line trace by channel, and we're going to connect that into the other add movement input as well. So essentially whenever we are moving, it's going to be firing off this line trace to check to see if we are under cover and if we are still under that cover. And I'm just going to double click this execution line to get a reroute node, just to keep it looking nice and organized like so. And then we want to draw the line to basically just straight up into the air. So I'm going to right click and get the actor location with that going into start. So we're starting it from the player's current location and the end is just again going to be straight up. So I'm going to come out the get actor location and get a vector plus a vector and all I'm going to do is just add 5000 onto the Z connecting that in there. It doesn't have to be 5000, it can be less, it can be more essentially just how far up you want it to go. So for me I want it to be if there is anything above the player at any level that will stop the rain because that makes sense to me but you can have it if something's only 100 meters above that will stop the rain if there's anything above that it won't. You can obviously change this to get it perfect for you but I think this is going to be good for me and again you might want to just change it about to make it work better for your level because you might have it set up differently to me. And then after this what I'm going to do is hold down B and left click to get a branch. The condition being the return value and the connection going in there because this return value just means if the line trace has hit something or not. So if it has hit something then the player is undercover and if it hasn't hit anything then they're not undercover. So true we want to stop the rain, false we want to start the rain. So what we're going to do is hold down O and left click twice to get two do onces here, connecting them both into the true and false there again like so. And you may remember that we're actually toggling the weather inside of the level blueprint, not the character blueprint. So how would we want to be able to access this so we can cast to the level blueprint? Well you may be aware that you can't actually cast to level blueprint or anything along those lines. So what we're going to use instead is an event dispatcher. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to set that up here and I will be making another video in the near future explaining over this in more detail. But essentially what we're going to do is we want to call the event from the level blueprint. So we're going to hit the plus event dispatcher in the bottom left here and I'm just going to name this toggle weather dispatcher as that makes sense to me. You can name this absolutely whatever you like. I'm going to compile, save, and very simply we can just drag and drop this on here and hit call like so. So we're going to call this dispatcher. So essentially that will then just do any code from what we bind this to, which again we're going to bind this in the level blueprint to the toggle weather code like so. And then out of the top one we're going to go into the reset of the bottom do once, and the bottom one we're going to the reset of the top do once. So I hope this makes sense. So essentially, whenever we move, we're going to check to see if we are undercover. And if we are undercover, we're going to toggle the weather. And if we're not undercover, we're going to toggle the weather again. And the reason I've got them separately like this, instead of having them as one, is because I want the do once, because otherwise it will just continually keep turning on and off, on and off, on and off all the time. So having these do onces here just makes this a lot more efficient and work a lot better for us. So once you've got this set up here, what we can do is now create the event for this dispatcher. So I'm going to compile, save, and we can actually close this and then hit blueprints and open the level blueprint so we can use this toggle weather code that we have here. So again, this is going to change the rain post process volume and also toggle the rain audio. So how do we call this event in a level blueprint from our character blueprint? Well, if we go to event begin play up here, what we can do is we can cast to our character. So for me, that's going to be cast to third person character. But if you use it, it could be third, first, whatever you've named it. 
And the object is obviously going to be get player character like so. And as third person character, all we want to do is now bind that event dispatcher we made. So as third person character, we can bind event and then whatever we named it. So I named mine toggle weather dispatcher like so. So we have bind event to toggle weather dispatcher like that. And the event I'm just going to connect into my toggle weather custom event there like so. And what this means is that whenever we call this event dispatcher, is going to then fire off this custom event here because we've binded the two together. So we've binded the event dispatcher to this custom event so they now work hand in hand. So we can compile, save and close this as well as this should now be the code done for us. So let's hit play and test this out. You can see it is now raining here because we're outside and if we go under cover here it stopped raining and if we leave the cover it's raining again. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have it raining while we're outside and then when we go inside or under cover it's going to stop raining and when we leave it will start raining again and again this works perfectly for wherever we want. This is a fully dynamic system so if I were to add in another floor, another ceiling sorry and make this lower or even higher, hit play, go over here, it will still work the exact same because we're using the line trace to detect where the ceiling is. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.